Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 49 of the Healthy Skin Show. Today, I want to talk about fatigue, which is a very common complaint that clients have and how it can play a role in your skin problems. You're probably familiar with being tired or even the term adrenal fatigue, but the truth is that fatigue is so much more than both of these things. In fact, there's a much deeper reason that often drives fatigue than not just sleeping well or the stress from scratching or unwanted glares. It underlies issues that you may or may not have with your adrenals, even if you can check off every symptom of an adrenal fatigue checklist. And actually, that is more appropriately known as HPA axis dysregulation. Adrenal fatigue's not technically a real thing. The issues actually have to do with the most basic biochemical way or recipe that your body makes energy in the first place. This is critical because if you can't efficiently produce energy, then not only will you feel tired, but your body won't have its necessary energy to rebuild healthier skin. You cannot fix this problem by eating more sugar or consuming caffeine either. For me to help you understand what's going on, we need to journey back to high school biology. Don't worry, I'll keep this super simple without boring you. So despite what you may have read or heard online, your adrenals don't make energy. What actually creates energy are these little power plants that are found in every cell called mitochondria. These power plants exist in many of the cells of your body, but are heavily concentrated in muscle tissue, especially your heart, liver, and brain, because, hey, your brain requires a lot of energy to function properly. Mitochondria generate your body's most basic energy currency, and they do this by burning fats and carbs, though on occasion this process can be supported with a few amino acids, but generally your mitochondria don't like to burn protein. I like to describe the process as a water wheel with two chutes, one that feeds in carbs and the other that feeds in fats. As the water wheel turns and things head toward the final stage, more officially known as oxidative phosphorylation, lots of energy is created. And all of the energy that is spit out of this system is officially known as adenosine triphosphate, or ATP for short. You can think of a single molecule of ATP as a coin, okay? Now, these energy coins are necessary for life itself, and certain biochemical reactions require more of them than others. But without ATP, you will feel tired. So to recap, your power plants burn fat and carbs through a water wheel-like process that ultimately spits out energy coins that are used for lots of processes all throughout your body. And this is how you make energy at the most basic level. In a perfect world and with plenty of raw ingredients, your mitochondria hum along making lots of energy for your body to use. But when things start to go sideways, your little power plants begin to function less efficiently. And this can happen as a result of poor nutrient status, even if you take supplements that can be due to poor eating habits, including restrictive elimination diets that are not warranted for a long period of time, low stomach acid, poor nutrient absorption, gut infections, leaky gut and gut inflammation, certain medications that actually cause nutrient depletions like statins, SSRIs, and heartburn medications, autoimmunity, disruption to gut transit time, meaning basically food and nutrients go too quickly through the gut and you end up with diarrhea, and excessive stress levels, which aren't properly managed. So having sufficient nutrients is one of the biggest key factors here that you can control. And these necessary nutrients to make ATP include thiamine, carnitine, niacin, riboflavin, vitamin B5, iron, alpha-lipoic acid, magnesium, manganese, and CoQ10. If you're low or straight-up deficient in one or more of these nutrients, 
your power plants start operating a lot more like smoggy, polluting factories. They can't produce those energy coins efficiently, and they also spit out a lot of free radicals, which do damage all throughout the body. So I want you to take a moment and imagine a dirty old power plant. The grass all around it is brown and dried out. The stream running nearby is fluorescent orange, and the bunnies hopping around have five eyes. You get the picture. It's not a healthy scenario, and it's one that isn't good for your energy levels. It's also highly stressful for your cells, and it's really difficult for your body in general to do all the things that it needs to do in order to be healthy, including rebuilding healthy skin. I know this sounds a bit confusing because for years we've been told that if you're tired, it must be your adrenals. Everyone thinks that they have adrenal fatigue. As I said, it's called HPA, axis dysregulation. But frankly, I think this is an overdiagnosed issue and does more disservice than good because the adrenals don't make energy. If you had a piggy bank as a kid with all of your coins saved up in it, you might remember an experience of your mom or dad saying, hey, so kiddo, I know you want to spend everything in your piggy bank at the candy store today, but you can only use $2 on candy. The rest stays in the bank. The stern parent in this scenario is like your adrenals, while the coins in the bank are your ATP. So the role of the adrenals is more about deciding how you spend the energy coins that you have available to you. Obviously, that's based on whether it's a normal day or if you're experiencing a serious stressor that your body likens to being chased by a tiger. Does that make sense? And if you've been taking an adrenal support supplement but found it to be of little help alleviating your fatigue, it's time to take a look at your mitochondrial function. Mitochondrial insufficiency is a serious issue for about 80% of my clients, and by filling those wells back up, you can make a lot of headway on not just transforming your energy, but also your skin and many other things as well. When your power plants aren't operating well, you'll notice a variety of symptoms. And yes, there is a lot of overlap with adrenal fatigue, which may be why it's so easy to confuse them. Not making enough ATP, or those energy coins, can contribute to skin rashes, slower cellular turnover, slower biochemical reactions, inability to efficiently recycle glutathione, which is an important antioxidant, chronic fatigue, brain fog, mood issues, effects on various autoimmune diseases, ongoing gut issues, fibromyalgia, muscle weakness, chronic fatigue syndrome, and even heart issues, especially if you're on a statin that depletes coenzyme Q10. Again, if you have these symptoms, it's time to take a serious look at what's going on with your mitochondria. You need ATP. Otherwise, your body doesn't have the energy to do what it needs to in order to thrive. I'm sure you're wondering what the best way to figure out what's going on is. Well, if you're curious to better understand how efficiently your power plants are generating ATP, the best way to test this is a combination of urine and blood testing. The first critical piece is to get an organic acid profile test done, which looks at the acids released through urine. It's an at-home test that gives a ton of information about nutrient status and specifically looks at those critical nutrients I already mentioned. If you're interested in learning more about this test and how you can order it, head on over to the show notes for this particular episode, and I've got everything listed for you there. Now, just a word of advice about the results of this test. They are not easy to understand because this is a lab meant to be reviewed by a functional practitioner. If you need help understanding the results and what to do, please let me know. Second, you need to get your serum vitamin B12 level checked. The reason is that mitochondrial supplements to essentially fill the wells back up either have no B12 or high doses of it. Since more is not always better, it's really important to check what your B12 level is to know what is the best formula for you. You should begin to see an improvement in symptoms in about three to four weeks after starting one of the mitochondrial supplements that's appropriate for you. And as you continue the supplement, you will see your symptoms continue to improve as the wells are refilled. 
Now, how long you'll need to stay on the supplement to support your mitochondria really depends on a number of factors, but realistically expect that you may need to stay on that particular supplement for at least three to four months. I hope that I've made what can be a very complicated topic more digestible and understandable for you. As you probably know by now, your unique combination of root causes is critical to figure out, especially if you want to get to the bottom of what's actually driving the flares and the rashes. And this can absolutely be and often is a piece of the puzzle, especially if you've had rashes for a long time. If you've got any questions or comments, head on over to this episode's post to share your thoughts and keep the conversation going. Also, I've posted a list of nutrients, symptoms, and testing in the show notes for this episode so you can easily find them. In the meantime, Please, please, please rate and review The Healthy Skin Show on your podcast platform of choice. And share this episode with someone you know who's seeking answers beyond the steroid creams. You never know how you could change the course of someone's experience with their rashes simply by sharing a link to the show in a Facebook group or emailing them directly. And I appreciate you for tuning in as our movement to get answers and find freedom from rashes grows. I wish you a fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you the next time.